Mac Gaibo. Hi, I'm Mac Gaibo. Today I'm going to be killing all a ship type that you asked me to kill in a recent poll, a recent competition thing that I ran. It was the highest vote for a specific ship type across the whole poll. So the, the top one was kill all interceptors and you didn't seem bothered as to which interceptor I would kill, you want me to kill them all. But second in the poll was kill all Asteros. I don't know what it is about Asteros in particular that caused you to pile so much hate upon them. I'm not here to question why, I'm just here to blow stuff up. So today I'm going to kill all Asteros. I'm in Cheetah because to be honest, this is the only place I could think of where I could catch Asteros that weren't just AFK or autopiloting and that's rare that you would see an Astero pilot actually do that, just hanging around or slow boating. I'd not be able to catch Asteros on a gate because they have a small signature radius but also very quick align times, which means that it's perfect for if you want to get away from a gate quickly but very, very difficult if you're a ganker and you want to blow them up. So I'm here with a tornado on the Jita 44 docking point, which if you've seen any of my Jita videos before, you'll know that there is a gap between where people land and where people dock. So I do get a couple of seconds to lock and blow things up. And it's the only place I can think of where I can catch them. And I am going to be using a tornado today. I did a little bit of research to see Asteros that were ganked in Jita to see if it was possible, although I really doubted it for a Thrasher to gank an Astero on its own, and it isn't. When you look at the faction frigates, I don't think there's any of them that you can time and time again gank Alpha with a Thrasher. And I say Alpha because when you're on a station in high security space like this, you're only really gonna get one shot off. So I went with the Tornado, and I'm using this fit here, which has no scanning on it, no scanning module on it. I'm not gonna be scanning these ships. I'm just gonna be killing all the Asteros that I can. I do have a looter ship here, a wreath, with one of my alts, but the fact is, oh, there's an Astero. Let's just see if we can lock it and kill it. No, that's gonna be the problem, is the very, very quick. I do have an alt here with a looting ship, but there are so many bots here with the surname Fury that will try and scoop the loot before me that it isn't really realistic. I'll be surprised if I get any of this loot today, but I will make the effort. So today's target, the Astero, you can see is got a roll bonus for a covert ops cloaking device and also bonuses for scanning. And it's also got the Galenti frigate bonuses is for drone hit points and you get armor resistance bonuses for the Amar frigate uh, skill level. So that means it's great for tracking ships down probing them or probing down sites and then cloaking up and killing them with drones. And that tends to be what they're used for and the quick align time means that it's quite good to, for escaping if, if something bigger comes after you. If you did vote for the Astero to be killed in the recent competition, could you please leave a, a, a comment? I'd be interested to know why you picked the Astero. Maybe you just felt like it was quite a challenge because of how small and quick it is. What I've got in the overview here is just frigates only. And there's one coming in. I'm just going to put the ship type in alphabetical order. So he's undocking. So the Asteros will be a bit more clear. So I'm a good 28, 29 kilometers away from the docking point, And I'm in a straight line with it to try and cut down the factor of transversal as it's moving in, it's moving towards me. So that means it should be easier to track. And my optimal is, where am I? It's 33 kilometers, so th this should be maximum damage that I'm dealing out here. Oh, there's an Astero there. I think he might be undocking. But I'm not gonna discriminate. If I see an Astero, I'm just gonna try and blow him up. There he is. Now the problem with that though, is that the transversal is a factor. Because he's moving forward there at an angle to me. And the tracking on this big old tornado's guns is not very good. Even though I've got mods to increase the tracking, it's not going to be good enough, I don't think, to get that outside the optimal as well. But if we don't get enough 
Estero's docking, that might just be something we have to do, because look, there's three undocking at the moment. If I'm going to switch to killing Estero's as they undock, I would probably want to move more over here, so the transversal's got less of an effect. No, we, we've only just started, let's give it a chance. Now there's a few Estero's. I'm wondering if... Common sense says that Estero's can't just undock. They must be docking as well, unless all these people are buying Esteros. Is there a run on the Estero? There's an Estero, but he's landed just on the inside of the docking point there. So he's gone. So I've got three sensor boosters here with uh, target and speed script. But I've also got a remote sensor booster as well, as you can see here. And then I've got a fleet boost. Basically, this is as fast as a tornado is going to get locking without implants. Also, I took all of my uh, free boosters that were there, and it does include a strength, scan strength bonus of 10%. So, yeah, this is, this is as quick as a tornado is going to lock without implants. Just seen about five Asteros undocking. Nobody docking. Where are you guys all coming from? Right, this Estero is undocking, but he's quite a tight angle there, so he is almost just moving away from me. And he's at my optimals, so it might be worth giving that a shot. Seeing as, oh. As I go to lock him, he actually docks. So what I've done is, I've set up a second pilot with another tornado just around here, about 30 kilometers away from the undock point. So if anything's undocking like that Estero there, then there'll be less issue with the transversal. So let's just see if we can kill him. He's still got the invulnerability. And there he is. Oh no. I think the tracking is an issue, because if I look at that, it said I missed the pilot completely. So the tracking there is just terrible. I'm going to need to just stick with the docking point. Be live and learn. All I need now is for some Asteros to bloody dock. Where are you all? But for me to figure that out just cost me a hundred million isk. So I suppose when you're doing it this way, you need to learn quickly. You do. Hi friends, I haven't come up here to read you a typical talk about the Alliance and what it needs this week. I don't have an itemised list from each department with bullet points to hit. Instead, I've come to talk to you about EVE Online. I think every one of us can think of another game that if you want to have fun for 60 minutes easily blows EVE Online out of the water. But if I ask you about a Halo match that you had 5 years ago, you couldn't tell me a single thing about it. However, if you get some EVE nerds sitting around the digital fireside, you can bet that they will start waxing poetical about a fight that happened five or even ten years ago. They will fondly remember their FC and call out the time that they saved the day by landing that scram or the time their Titan died and they reshipped into another Titan and jumped back into the same fight. I'm an Eve romantic because of those chats around the fireside. There may be a million other games that are better to play, but there are none that are better to experience. Eve is the game that we tell stories about. Eve is the game where we fondly remember our comrades that we fought with and hope that they are doing well, wherever they are in life. Now he goes on to talk about things that happened specific to the goons, to their alliance, where they had an opportunity to advance and to gain significant amount of space in what would have been an amazing victory. But they didn't take it because the small percentage chance that they could fail. And he tells this story from the point of view of someone who feels that that was clearly the wrong decision. He goes on to say, EVE Online is a game that delivers greater experiences than any other game, but it also demands more sacrifices. And when you're staying up that extra hour late, even though you'd rather be sleeping because you work tomorrow, your alliance leader won't be missing it because he's got other things to do. He'll be right next to you in the fleet. 
And while he says so, if this is the future you want for goons, I think we can all take from this some of these words to apply to if this is the future we want for New Eden, for EVE Online. He talks about wanting people to show up to fleets in greater and greater numbers, to be there next to him, and to create new memories, the stories together. There was a time when every one of you was a romantic about this game, but slowly you lost it. You took on the title Bitter Vet and you bore it proudly like armour so that no one could accuse you of loving it and making a fool of you for liking it like you once did. If you ask me if I'm bitter about EVE Online, no. No, I'm not. I fought with every one of you and all I remember are the good memories. How can you not be romantic about EVE Online? So I thank you for the trust you've given me. I ask you to be romantic about EVE Online. I'll see you in Fleet. I know that the goons have had some very serious problems which have just come to light, certainly in the public forum recently, although it does seem like a lots of people say this has been going on for years, it's been an open secret. But now that it's truly open, in the culture that we've got nowadays, thankfully, it hasn't been allowed to persist. It's been addressed and it's been addressed in the public forum. People have moved on and it is incredibly reassuring to see that the people who are taking over are not just living life the same way as their predecessors. The actions are still to follow, but the words are a good start. From an outsider looking at goons and the, the space that they occupy, it looks like that they've been stagnant and just in the same place for years. What's the point of paying to play a game and then just sitting there, not doing anything, not advancing? You may get richer, but where are the experiences? Where are the stories? But something else that hit home about this for every single player is that it came at the right time. The stories that were coming out about the goons and particular players were incredibly depressing. And I think it threatened to tar all EVE players with the same brush, which is something that we know not to be true. And the other thing that happened was the reaction to an announcement that was made by CCP talking about the Summer Lullin players. And it was the reaction to that was so negative and had a lot of doom about it. So to have this speech come out, to me seemed like perfect timing. It's something that we all needed. And I think we can think about it like this. EVE isn't the kind of game where you're gonna get constant content by sitting around. You need to generate your own content by going out and doing things. But I think that extends to optimism too. If you sit and stew and just moan, you're creating your own self-culture of negativity. Much like creating your content, you've got to create your own optimism as well. Whether that be as an individual or as a corp decision or making a speech like this. That content, that optimism is there. It's there to be made, it's there to be grabbed. And if you're gonna sit around waiting for someone else to bring it to you, you might be waiting for a long time. You don't need to bring all of the content to everybody, but you can be part of a mechanism that ups the game and makes things interesting. And there is an Estero. And I don't think I even did it any damage. But I'm gonna be optimistic about it. Let's have a little look at the logs and see what happened. Because it seemed to be in the perfect place. It missed the ship completely. That's interesting. That's over 200 million isk of interesting so far. But I missed, missed the ship completely. I'm going to need to do a little bit of homework about this. I've made two changes to the tornado fit that I was using. The first one is I've removed a sensor booster and put in a target painter. And what that'll do is make the ship effectively a bit bigger and easier to hit. The second thing is I've taken out one of the tracking gyro stabilizers and replaced it with a second tracking enhancer. So the Astero will basically be easier to hit because I'll be able to track it slightly better and it'll appear to be bigger when it comes to calculating the maths because I'm increasing its signature radius. So we'll give that a try. Otherwise this video is just going to be about me littering the 4-4 station in Jita with tornado wrecks. So I'm back out again. I've moved my tornado a little bit further back as well. 
because that might make the tracking issue less of a problem. And I'm overheating my target painter, which is a 41% signature radius modifier boost. So let's hope that the combination of those two things helps us out. All I need now is some targets. There's an Astero there. Yes! And that one worked. Someone else looted it, but it doesn't matter. It's about the kill. Wow, two billion. Yes. I mean, someone else has got the loot, but this is about killing all the steros, right? 2.2 billion. I'd call that a result. So this is the character who got the loot. And the reason he got the loot, and we can see just how quickly he got it, because I switched over to my character here who was right on top of the loot and before it even showed up for me to click on it it had been scooped by someone else and it's this character who is using automation he's breaking the terms and conditions of EVE Online and he uses scripts to get the loot and he's been reported I've mentioned it in videos he's been reported for literally years and CCP does absolutely nothing about it. you saw me here sitting here for such a long time waiting to shoot something I knew that that kill was coming anybody else if they knew that I had shot might have been able to scoop it before me but they didn't know I was about to shoot something either they are sitting over their keyboard for hours and hours waiting just on the off chance that someone else does something and then they managing it to scoop it before me or far more likely and what and I know that they do this, it's automated. And the reason that I know that they do it is because they've shared that information with other members of the ganking community. And it's just part of EVE Online. They've got in touch with me, they like to gloat about it. But given that CCP know about it, the security team, it's been reported to them, they, for whatever reason, don't do anything about it. I mean. They could easily see from the time stamps, the time I did the kill, and the time that it was looted. Is that humanly possible? No, it isn't. It isn't. Let's be honest, it isn't. People are always asking me if you got video footage of this happening. I'm like, well, there it is. But I'm not here for. I've, I'm not here for the loot. I'm, I don't even have a cargo scanner on these ships. This is about you telling me to go out and kill as many asteros as I can. From that point of view, we just succeeded. In my last video, or maybe the one before that, I made a little appeal for ISK to help out to fund the videos. And certainly if you're enjoying this and you want to contribute some ISK or Plex towards it, to know that you've been part of this chaos, then that would be incredibly appreciated. And you can do that by sending that to me in game, either by a contract or just send in the ISK, but if you do send the ISK, send me a little message so I can know what it's for. There are some very generous people who've already sent through ISK and Plex, and you, you're very kind and you're funding this video. So thank you very much for that. It, it really, really is appreciated because running these videos with the ships, each one of these is a hundred million and Plexing the accounts as well, it, it all adds up. So thank you very much. And we can just see here that there's another Praxis out called Majin Vejito, who is also a scripted loot thief. It's the same character as the Kuranai one who stole the loot before. He just switches between them. If one of them goes suspect, he just switches over and brings this one out. But it's exactly the same. But I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep shooting and it will show you that these people are looting at an inhumanly fast speed. Maybe CCP will do something about it. I doubt it, I don't know, but let's just keep going. So I've got this set up now. I've got Mac in place. I'm just gonna get him boosted. And I've changed the screen a little bit. So we've got my looter here, who's right next to the wreck. And you can see the Praxis, Majin Vejito. And what we'll do is next time I get a kill, we'll see how quickly it is for the loot to turn up and then to disappear. And bear in mind, I know that this kill's coming, nobody else does. 
So is it possible that I can click on that and loot it when I know it's coming before someone else is just sitting there not knowing what's about to happen? Now that worked last time with the, the target painter, so we'll do that again. So he's an Astero that's undocking. We'll try blowing that one up just to see if we can. No. So even though I've got the the sensor boosting and what have you, the tracking, it isn't enough to catch a moving Astero that's moving across me like that. It needs to be something that's moving towards me. So here we go, back in position. I've got my target painter and my guns ready. I'm just gonna wait on some targets. I'll just take a little look at that Astero that I did kill. He had four inertia stabilizers on. So he'll be going through the gates like the clappers, turning and warping away. And his rigs were gravity capacitor upgrades, which is a rig that increases your scan probe strength. So his ship had no tank other than the natural resists. He had nothing built in at all. So the damage it took to blow him up was 2,121, which is really base level of the Astero, which only would increase by the pilot's individual skills implants. And he's clearly been out and about doing sites, hacking and whatnot, data sites. Did you guys know that this was gonna happen? That I was just gonna be sitting around for hours just waiting on no Asteros docking. Asteros don't dock. At least they don't dock here. Where are they all? This is why you picked Asteros, isn't it? There's an Astero. And he's dead. Now, if I click on that, it, now. Can you see that that got looted before I could even see what was inside it? And I knew that that kill was coming. Nobody else did. And that's because this character, who's now gone suspect and docked, that was fully automated. People say to me, have you got video footage? Well, here it is, so. Should we see what we just killed? Just 95 million. Ah, oh, but it's skins. Well, there you go. The valuation says 95 million. But that skin on its own is selling for 450 million. That skin isn't even for sale. And that skin is selling for 2 billion. And that skin is selling for a billion in its own as well. So that is a multi-billion kill looted by the bots. I know some people are going to be thinking, why do you keep killing here if you know that these bots are stealing it? If people using automated scripts are stealing it? Well, it's because I need to have it on video. I need to have this here. So when I go back to the CCP security team, I get the support from people who say, well, why don't you have it on video? Why don't you have any proof? So there's different kinds of automation. There's the automation which CCP are banning people for, but that's complex things like people doing faction warfare plexes, jackdaws doing faction warfare sites, mining is an old thing that people have been botting with, people doing sites in null sec, but the automation of tasks like scooping loot and then docking is something that has been going on for years um, something that CCP has never, ever taken any action against. So here's the new plan. I'm going to sit outside the undock point of Jeter in front of the station. So the plan would appear to be, if anything is coming out in front of me like that, then I can try and shoot it. And you can see there I, <laughs> I almost got as far as the hull there which is certainly a lot better than the kills that I was getting, uh, the shots I was doing earlier where I was doing no damage at all. So I'm gonna sit out front and see if I can get the ships as they're undocking. But what it also means is that I'm at a spot where I could maybe shoot ships as they dock as well. Because this spot here, which my loot is now at, is, it's at an angle, but it's about 23, 25 kilometers away from where people dock. So I'm going to give this a shot as a place to shoot 
more Estero's from. So I'm just thinking back to that last kill that I got there, or not a kill, that last fail, and I'm thinking what might have tipped it is if my booster ship had been boosting me, because it does help me with tracking, and that might have made the difference. So I'm getting boosted now this time, and we'll, we'll maybe do one more, one more Estero, and we'll see how it goes. Now I've got my looter up here, but my chances of getting any loot is pretty slim, because there's lots of people on the undock who are just looking out for wrecks. So we'll just see how it goes. Now this is just the beginning of uh, harassment of Asteros, I, I believe. I think um, what we could maybe do is, is take the knowledge that we've gained from this with regards to the, the tracking and the damage to be caused and the, the best position to be in, and use this as a starting point for if you want to come to Jeter and start indiscriminately killing Asteros, since you obviously feel so strongly about it, voting it so high. Because I would hate to start a movement called Kill Asteros, and in reality, we've killed like two or three. So there's one coming out here, but he's, he's a bit too far, I think. He's 46 kilometers. So I might move in a bit tighter. Right, we'll stop there. Now we can see there, this is the Fury. This is the pilot who stole the loot before. One of the Furies, the Furies are famous for being on Jeter and for using scripts to steal the loot. There's an Estero there coming out. Again, it just seems like he's too far away. We'll give this one a shot then. Wow, got him. I imagine someone else is going to get the loot. But we killed him. Okay. So I did get the loot. Let's see who we killed. We killed an Estero, 91 million, which is probably mostly in the Corporal, the Sisters Corporal, yeah, that's 24 million. And then the Estero itself, oh, it's 100 million now, my goodness. Another dead Estero. So about 32 million in loot is what I picked up there, which is neither here nor there. So you wanted me to kill Esteros, I've learnt a bit about it. I've learnt you can kill them on the docking point, but the bots are active and they'll steal the loot. I've learnt it's possible to get the Asteros as they undock as well. And that a tornado is maybe 60-70% of the time something you can kill an Estero with provided it's travelling in a nice straight line either towards you or away from you. Next time and I don't know how I'm going to do this, but next time I'm going to be killing all interceptors. That's going to be tricky. So thanks for watching. I'm MacGyver. Please donate if you want to help out with making more videos like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Bye now.